Good to have each and every one of you here this morning. Amen. I love to come to church. How about you? I just pray God will bless us. Just got a few quick announcements real quick that we're going to try to go through. Y'all pray for James. He's trying to do two things at one time, multitasking back there. He's trying to run our streams here and do the video and uh, everything. Uh, so he, he's uh, we're missing some of our help this morning. The women's meeting uh, is going to be March 28th at 4 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, the women's group will be selling uh, selling raffle tickets to raffle off an Easter basket. See Nicole for tickets, but Nicole ain't here. So who are we going to see for tickets? Who got tickets? Okay, just buy them from, from Michelle and you'll be good to go. Uh, women's Bible study. We're done? Oh, we're done. We can take that one off, James. Praise the Lord. We got that one over with. We're going to another one, right? When you starting that? Okay. Everybody heard that? Having a meet and greet on the 29th, and they're going to start the women's Bible study on the 12th. That's a Monday night. Um, don't forget our, our Wednesday night uh, family dinner nights that we're doing with our Bible study. Um, we started a, a, a class this past Wednesday night. Uh, Joey started it for us, but I'm going to do it this week. Um, and uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. Uh, it's going to be interactive. So come and uh, interact with us as we try to, uh, we don't want to bore you to death, but we want to we want to interact with you and try to get you going and, and give you some vital information that will help you in your Christian life and your Christian walk. And uh, I'm praying that uh, you You'll come out. We're going to feed you. I think this week is tacos, taco night. So uh, if you like tacos, come out. We'll feed you some tacos. Um, if you if you went here last Wednesday night, she made a hamburger casserole. It was so good. Lord, it was good. So uh, um, please, if you can, uh, come. Every, yeah, every night has been good. The food has been awesome. So uh, 6 o'clock, we start eating. If you can't get here till late, Later than that, that's fine. We'll save the food. What's left over, you can go pick up some and come sit down and eat. So come and be a part of that with us. Uh, we're having an Easter-wide, uh, Easter we're having a church-wide <laughs> Easter party. An Easter-wide church party. How about that? A church-wide Easter party, April the 3rd from 1 to 5. Uh, we're asking that if you will get some of uh, those classic eggs and uh, put some candy in them. And uh, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt. Uh, we're having some bounce houses, I think, and uh, there's going to be a special appearance from what I understand. So uh, you don't want to miss that. I'm excited about that. So uh, come out and be a part of that with us. Youth news. The youth group will uh, be taking a rafting trip to, I can't ever say that word, Okoe. Is that right? That's close enough. On May 14th through the 16th, uh, you can see Chase or Nicole. Uh, for more information on that, um, I think they've already pretty much booked it, um, and so they're going now. It's just a part of you paid your money or not. Um, so um, I, I love them, but big people don't go on rafting trips, so I ain't going. So if I fall out that boat, I, there ain't gonna be no, there ain't gonna be no pulling myself back into no boat. I'm gonna tell you right now. I mean, they ain't got no cranes on there. <laughs> It ain't a winch or anything like that. You know, I'm, I'm messed up, I'm going to tell you. So uh, me and Rocks don't go together. But uh, anyway, I'm excited for the, for, the, for the teens to be able to do that. So uh, we got some things going on. I want you to be a part. Please help us. We're so, so trying to get the word out that Colston Branch Baptist Church is alive and well. And we're not stopping, you know. I went by so many churches this weekend, different places, and they had signs on the doors. But. You know, they were closed and this, this, and this. And I'm like, I just can't shut out Jesus. Amen. So uh, anyway, we're trying to get the word out. Help us to do that. I can't do it by myself. I need your help. So invite somebody to come to church. And um, it's good to have Taylor with us. It's been a while since I've seen Tay Tay. I've seen her car in the yard. I said, I sure hope she comes to church because I ain't seen her in forever. But uh, anyway, we just glad you're here. We want to worship the Lord. I'm going to ask Chase, if he will, to come. He's going to open up our service, and we're going to do some worship. How many people come to worship today? Uh, 
maybe maybe half, maybe half. I come to worship this day. Good morning. How's everybody? <laughs> Good morning. All right, if you want to, you can turn to your Bible sheet. It's five six and three. Uh, it's going to be just a little bit before you. I'll tell you this week I was pretty poor in sports. And I got food poisoning, so it's not good. But I can tell you today that I am here to worship my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Matthew verse, chapter 5, verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I'm reminded of a passage in Luke where it says that the beggar Lazarus stood at the rich man's door, and he begged for bread. He begged for crumbs off the Lord's table. And dogs And dogs would come and lick his sores. That's how poor he was. He didn't feel like he deserved to stand up and get the dog dog. That's pretty poor. But the Bible says that when he died, he was welcomed to heaven. I'm here to tell you today that he welcomes the beggar. He welcomes. When you walk through those doors, you are welcome into the house of the Lord. That we don't have to worry about anything. I keep telling you this week after week. You don't have to worry. When you're here, everything's okay. God is with you. His word says he will never leave you nor forsake you. I love that passage because it reminds me that my God will fight for me. Even though I was sick this week, and let me tell you that I was sick, my God was still with me. I just love him today. I pray right now that you'll just bow your heads, be with me right now. Just close your eyes and focus on Jesus right now. Father God, we are here today to worship you. We are here today to worship your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. We thank you right now that though we may be poor in spirit, though things may have happened this week, that you will be with us, God, that you will show us your love, that you will welcome us into your, your house, that you will welcome us into your love and your passion and your authority. Be with us right now as, as we stand and worship you, that you will be with us, that you will lead us in your worship, and that you will hear us from heaven and that you will show us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. All right, let's stand and worship the Lord this morning. Hey, give me a little bit more drums in the ear, folks. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord, I said, can't nobody do me like Jesus, cause he's my friend. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus.
This time I'm going to ask our ushers to come and receive our morning. I told y'all last Sunday, before you come in here, let's let something pump you up and run you straight in this church and get ready so nobody steal your stuff. Don't let nobody steal your stuff. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. so good to us, man. I am I'm in amaze of his goodness and how he loves us. And it don't matter what people say, what people say and who people say I am, because I know who I am.
tua vida. Vidas. so glad to know that I am a child of God this morning. How about you? Are you glad to know that you're a child of God this morning?
to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and we will make room for you.
I love you, and I need you. And though my world may fall, I'll never let you go. You're my Savior, my closest friend, and I will worship you until the very end. Because I love you. And I need you. And though my world may fall, I will never let you go. You're my Savior, my closest friend. And I will worship you until the very end. Mm. If you can't sing that this morning, there's something wrong with you. I'm telling you right now, he is my Savior. He is my closest friend. Hey, Amen. I'm, I'm telling you, I get excited. Man, I get excited when I read the word and I read about how, how good God is. Baby, I left my handkerchief on the desk one more time. How about that? You were, you were so good. Thank you, baby. But I read about the scriptures when he said, No greater love hath any man than this than he laid down his life for his friend. And I start reading those things, and I start reading about, you know, about being truly his friend. And what it means to be a friend to somebody. You know, a friend is somebody that's there for you no matter what. The good, the bad, or the ugly. I had an opportunity to watch a movie this week. Uh, it was based on the story of LBJ. And uh, y'all know I'm, I'm a history buff, and I love stuff like that. And, you know, there, there came a time in his life when one of his top aides... Uh, kind of got in trouble, and uh, he basically just cut him off. You know, he, he wanted to separate himself from that person. This guy had been a loyal worker for him for 25 years, and he just 
cut him off and, and didn't want nothing else to do with him because he felt like that he was going to sabotage his campaign and, and this and that. And, uh, and, I, and I begin to think, Lord, how many times do we cut people off because of a mistake? I don't know about you this morning, but I'm glad God didn't cut me off because of mistakes. Amen? Because I don't know about you, but I make them daily. Amen? It ain't weekly. It's daily. Amen? And I, I pray every day, God, forgive me. Help me to do better. I don't want to make the same mistake that I made yesterday. Amen? I hope I learn from my mistakes. But we are going to make mistakes. And I'm just thankful today to know that God loves us. Amen? If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn me to uh, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Chase, you, you back there, buddy? You got me? Go ahead. But we're going to verse uh, 17. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm going to get some more Bible versions on this app back here because every time I read the King James, I get, I get swear to read it in the King James. Because I can't understand a word they're trying to say with the thous and the shalls. We need the NIV or something up in here where we can understand some stuff a little better. But we're going to go for it anyway. And when he had gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I might inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why, thou, why callest thou me good? Is there none good but one? There is none good but one. Go back. I'm sorry, boy. And that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and he said unto him, Master, all of these I have observed from my youth. Verse 21 says, and Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, one thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and take up your cross and follow me. Verse 22, the last verse we're going to read in this chapter. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. I started a series last week. It's, I met him when? And last week we talked about I met him in a dry and thirsty place. This week I want to talk about I met him at the top of my game. And I don't know about you, but Jesus is my treasure in heaven. He is my way to heaven. Amen. I can only reach my treasure in heaven by putting my full and complete trust in him. It cannot be Christ plus something else. It can only be Christ plus nothing, period. Amen. It's got to be all about Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but I know Shell is fixing to have some surgery uh, this week, amen, and I know when I, if I have to have surgery and I go see a surgeon, I'm not going to look up on the internet or go through the phone book to find a surgeon. I'm going to try to find somebody who know what they're doing, amen. I don't want to find one and just come out of college and say, hey, this is going to be my first surgery, uh, but I, I, I feel confident. I, I Hold up, cuz. <laughs> if you ain't done this before, you ain't working on me, you know. I mean, I ain't trying to be funny. I'm not going to take a plane trip. With somebody who is a first-time pilot. You know? I mean, I want somebody who has logged hours in, you know, and got some flying time in and, and knows and maybe has even been in some situations that they got out of. I don't want no newcomer that don't know what they're doing, amen, to try to get me to where I'm going. Amen? I think it's obvious in both cases that we don't want things like that in our life. But here's the thing. It's a feeling that we got to have called trust. More like confidence. Y'all know uh, I'm not a, and I wish Miss Paula was here, but Paula is with uh, Miss Ruth, so Kathy could come today. I'm glad to have Kathy with us today, man. And it's Kathy and Frank and Quentin and Ronnie's anniversary. 
They all got married on the same day, at the same time. No, I'm playing. <laughs> Kathy and Frank are celebrating 29 years, and I don't know how in the world Kathy has put up with Frank for 29 years. I just, I don't know. She is going to get a couple of extra stars on her crown when she makes the heaven. And Quentin has been putting up with Ronnie for 25 years, and I don't know how in the world he's done that. Oh, 23 years, I'm sorry, 23 years. And I don't know how in the world he's done that, you know, but uh, Quentin is going to be some extra stars in your crown also for dealing with Ronnie. Um, you know, we just don't, we just don't know how, but praise the Lord. Now, I'm, I'm happy for them this morning. But it's confidence and trust is what it takes. But, you know, I, I'm not a big uh, English scholar. Matter of fact, English was probably the worst subject that I've ever had in my life. And you probably know that by the way I talk. But it's all good, because I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to Jesus. So anyway, as I was looking up this word this week, and that's something I rarely do, but the Lord pricked in my heart to look up this word confidence. And y'all, it's a, it's a compound word made up of Latin words, con and fides, which literally means, and I don't know why, until I read this, why God wanted me to do that, which literally means with faith. And man, when I read that, that thing, that thing jacked me up. I was about to have church in my office. You know, we, we want confidence in something, amen? In other words, we want to have faith in something. You know, I have faith in Jesus, knowing that with my confidence in Jesus, that he's going to take care of everything, amen? When you go to have surgery, you want to have confidence in that doctor that he's going to do the right thing, amen? When you get on a plane, you have confidence in that pilot that he's going to fly and do everything right, amen? He ain't, done, he ain't done speaked up a couple bottles before he got up in there, you know. You want to make sure that you have confidence. And that's what we got to understand, that we have to have confidence. Now, Chase, go back to uh, Mark 22 and verse 17. Mark, no, Mark 10, I'm sorry, in verse 17. Mark 10, 17. I'm, I'm, reading, this, I'm reading this passage this week. And there was a, a, a couple of moments in this passage to me that was a pay attention moment. And in verse 17, it says, when he had gone forth into the way, talking about Jesus, there came one running and kneeled to him. Now, this lets me know that this man was desperate. Amen. The story is called the rich young ruler. I tried to figure that out this week. Why do they call him the rich young ruler? Because there's nowhere that I can find that he was young. But that's how it got titled. He's the rich young ruler. So I'll use it. They use it. I'll use it. But he came and he was hungry for something. He was wanting something. And he came running. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I'm in need, amen, I don't have a problem running for what I need, amen. When I'm in need, I don't have a problem kneeling down to whatever I need to kneel down to, hey, and say I'm in need. There's times that we had to kneel down before somebody else. You know what? When I asked my wife to marry me, quit, I knelt down. And we was at one of those steakhouses where they throw the, uh, the, the peanuts on the floor and everything. I got down in the peanut hole to ask her to marry me. When you want something, you don't mind chasing after it, amen? But the problem is there's a price, amen, to chasing to something and to get something. There's a price to meeting God when, when you're at the top of your game. Now, it's amazing to me. When you, when you go through this stuff and you're looking and, and, and this, and this man, I mean, if you, if you, if you read the story and you understand the story, this man had great riches. He didn't want for nothing. I mean, just a few weeks ago, billionaire Elon Musk, I don't know if y'all have heard of Elon Musk or not, but he owns Tesla. Um, uh, when they, when they did that little whatever with the GameStop deal. He lost $15 million in the GameStop drop of the stock. $15 million. Because of the billionaire. 
That'd be like you dropping 15 cents. You know? I was going to say $15, but I'd have hurt if I lost $15. I'd be mad. <laughs> Shoot. They ain't tough around the house, boy. $15, $15, you know? <laughs> That's going to give me two gallons of gas. Thank you, President Biden. Um, <laughs> I kind of wish he'd have fell down them steps instead of them, but anyway, you know. I don't mean no harm. But he, <laughs> the one behind him might be worse, so I'm just going to keep on praying for him. Jesus, keep his mind straight. But you think about it. He ain't missed a beat. He's still probably drinking his champagne and caviar, eating his caviar and all that. Hey, it's just a, a drop in the pan for him. I mean, you think about all these people like Jeff Bledsoe and Bill and Melinda Gates and Warren Buffett. Mark Zuckerberg and the Walton family. You know, they don't want for nothing. They want to go somewhere, they, they get on their private jet and go wherever they want to go. You know, there's a show that comes on. I don't even remember what channel it comes on, but it talks about e epic homes and epic boats and, and epic yachts and all this kind of stuff. I love watch that because, you know, I always think, Lord, you know, if my numbers ever hit, I'm going to get me one of them. So you got to play the numbers to get them. So I don't play the numbers, so I ain't going to get them. But anyway, the Lord can make it happen. I'm just going to say it. But anyway, um, I like look at that thing. And I was watching this one uh, about this, this yacht. And this yacht itself costs $600 million. And to maintain the yacht, it costs $20 million a year to maintain the yacht with fuel, uh, the crew members, all the things, the storage and all of that. And I'm thinking, six hundred million to buy it, twenty million to keep it up, and they said most people who own those yachts are only on those yachts like three to four weeks out of fifty-two weeks in a year. That's a lot of money to be spending to do something like that. But when people have it and they have the top of the game, it don't mean nothing, you know. See, this is what happened. This young man came to Jesus. And he was at the top of his game, and, and he didn't realize what Jesus was fixing to throw on him. I, I think about when I read in the Bible, and I think about King Solomon. And if you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2, 4 through 10, he said, I made myself gardens and parks and planted them all, all kind of fruit trees. I made myself pools from waters of the forest of growing trees. I bought male and female servants or slaves, and slaves were born into my house. I also had great possessions of herds and flocks, more than anyone who were, who were before me in Jerusalem. I also gathered myself for myself silver and gold and the treasure of the kings and of providence. I got singers, both men and women, and the lights of flesh. And many cock and binds. Lord, I don't know what's wrong with that mouth. So I became great and surpassed all who were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I kept my heart from no pleasure. For my heart found pleasure in my toil. And this was my reward for all my toil. Because that, like, he had it. He had it. No doubt this young, rich, rich young ruler had required wealth that, like Samson, Solomon. Probably not as much, but he was there. He realized. Ecclesiastes 2 and 11. King Solomon had realized that all was vanity and chasing after the wind. There was nothing to be gained under the sun. I mean, what's left when, when, you, when, when, when you have everything? When you have absolute, absolutely everything you need and want, what's left? Well, this is what's left, left. Mark 10 and 17. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? See, let me tell you something. Money and riches and all that's good, but that ain't going to buy your way to heaven. See, there ain't but one way to heaven. And Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father except through me. 
Man, I, 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 when I read that scripture, Quinn, I picture Jesus standing at the door. And he said, I'm going to let you in, but the only way through here is through me. Man, that excites me. To know Jesus paid the price for us and that we could live for him and, 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 and sup with him and, and let him just bless us daily if we would just submit to him. I tell you another great equalizer between, between the rich, the poor, the young and the old called death. Like Jesus, death has no respect of a person. None of us know, the Bible says it's important for all men to die and then the resurrection, right? So none of us know when we're going to go. I hope my ticket ain't soon, you know. I ain't ready to go. I mean, I'm ready to go, but I don't want to go. How about that? Well, I want to go. It's kind of messed up. I want to go, but I don't want to go. You know what I'm saying? I'd like to stay a little longer, but I just don't know how much longer, you know. So that's on Jesus. Whenever he's ready for me, I'm ready, you know. I'm not volunteering today. How about that? That makes sense? But I want to I want, I want go to heaven. That's my ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is when I stand before Jesus, he says, or I stand before God, he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Not depart from me, you work of iniquity. I know you're not. You see, there's going to be a lot of people that stand before judgment and say, God, I've done this in your name, and I sung in your name, and I taught in your name, and, and I used to lead the children in your name, and I was the teen director, and I was the youth director, and I was this and this and this. And he's going to say, depart from me. I don't know you. What you mean you don't know me? I don't know you. I was sitting in that pew at Colston Branch Baptist Church for 40 years. I don't know you. I know you, though. But I don't know you. Man, how hard would that be? Begging and pleading. And all he says is, I know you. I can imagine people going to be like, Jesus, tell me. And Jesus is going to be like, we don't know you. See, we all got a chance, but it's up to us what we're going to do with that chance. See, we all got a chance, but it's up to us if we're going to do that chance because Jesus is the way. He loves us. I, I say this a lot, and I truly mean this. A lot of times, get back to Mark, if you will. A lot of times, I, and I say this a lot, truly, that I say we have a a lot of people have a head knowledge of the word and of Jesus, but not a heart knowledge. And I believe there's a lot of truth in that. Because this man had a head knowledge, but not a heart knowledge. Go to verse 17. I mean, 18. 19. I'll get to it in a minute. He says, thou knowest the commandments. Now think about this. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Fraud not. And honor thy father and mother. That's six that he followed. There's ten. Correct? What's the first four? Because this is the last six. What's the first four? It was all about God. This is all about self. Remember when Jesus said, you can hang all of them on two? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. See, he had one part of it down, but the other part he didn't have down. See, what we don't understand is we can't take pieces and parts of what God is trying to do in our lives. We have to take the whole Bible, rightly divided, 
and apply it to our life that we can stand on the Word of God and know the Word of God and live the Word of God. You can't live part of it and do something else with the other. Yes, you can obey your parents. Yes, you cannot commit adultery. Yes, you cannot kill. And all those are great things. But those things are not the ones that compare to God. Because my God, if I have him, if I commit adultery, if I kill, if I steal, if I bear false witness, if I defend or de de defraud not, and if I don't honor my father and mother, guess what? My God can still forgive me of all those things. We forget about God part. Love God with all your heart. See, it's hard for us. It's hard for us to love. The Bible says this, no man can love two masters. Either you love one and hate the other. It's hard to love two things at one time. There was a country song about that, wasn't it? Yeah, trying to love two women. Yeah, that's it. It's like a ball and chain. That's it. Well, I knew there was a song. Y'all know I know songs now. It's like a walking jukebox. That is like a ball and chain, though. That's the same thing in our life. When you try to love the world and try to love Jesus, it's miserable. Come on, can somebody testify? I know I can. When you're trying to love Jesus and you're trying to love the world, it don't work. It's like mixing oil and water. It don't go together. And see, that's what the young, rich, young ruler was doing. He was loving And Jesus said, verse 20, or 21, you got your book. And Jesus, beholding, loved him. See, I, I, love, I love reading this like this because I'm picturing this. And, and the young man just said, Master, you know I've kept all this since my youth. And Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, one thing you lack, go thy way, sell whatsoever you have, and give it to the poor. I, I, this is the, this is, I know the scripture says, you know, the next scripture says he went away sad because he had great riches or great inheritance, whatever possessions, okay? So, uh, if you study this and you get into this, wonder what, what he really had problems with. Did he really have problems with giving it all away? Or taking up his cross and following Jesus? I think it was both. Because if you went over the, over the part where you could give it all away, it ain't nothing to take up your cross and follow Jesus. And here, here's the real question that I always ask, and in my study, and I have yet to find an answer, I really wonder if Jesus would have really made him do all that. I wonder sometimes if that wasn't just a test. Like Abraham and Isaac. And I know, I know the church world has, has tried to beat everybody down saying you can't do this, you can go to heaven. And that's a lie because there's a bunch of people in, in the Bible that believe that, okay? But I wonder if he would have went away <coughs> or went to go away to do it or said, Jesus, I'll do it in a minute. Would this scripture would have read different? And Jesus said, keep your stuff. Take your new cross because you're going to help finance the ministry while we walking through all these woods. I ain't going to have to take two fishes and five loads of feed 5,000 because Doug got the bank. He going to go to Tucky Fried Chicken. He buying a basket for everybody. We ain't got to have Captain D's today. We getting fried chicken. But he turned away sad because he had great possessions. <coughs> Jesus will meet us. Betsy, you can get ready and come on. Jesus will meet us in a lot of places, when we're dry and thirsty, 
when we're at the top of our game. The problem is, are we willing to meet Jesus? Are we willing to turn everything over to Jesus? Are we willing to say, God, there's nothing that I have that's more precious than you. We sing a song that says, Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. There's nothing I desire compared to you. What if we could ever get there in our true heart and say, God, there's nothing in this world that I have that means more to me than you. Preacher, I don't know. I sure love my kids. But if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have your kids. Preacher, I sure love my job. But if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have the job. I'm sure I sure love my house and my land. But if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have that. No, preacher, you're wrong. My granddaddy bought that. Or my grandmama got that. No, 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 no. Go, go back if you want to. It was because of the blessings of God your grandparents gave us. See, I don't care where you go. God orchestrates everything in your life. God orchestrates everything in your life. You know how I know that? Because Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. He knows the plans he has for you. Now, we are free mortal agents. We can do what we want to do. I feel like a lot of times, like I said the other week, I feel like a lot of times we're going down the road and there's a, there's a fork in the road. And God knows whichever fork you take and what your path. He knows the way. But are you going to take the right way? Are you going to choose right? Are you going to choose to serve him? Are you going to be willing to give up everything you have and say, God, I'll serve you? Are you going to be willing to say, God, whatever it takes? Oh, my Lord. People don't pray that anymore. Deborah, when I was growing up, I used to hear people pray that. Quentin, I know you remember. When we were growing up, you would hear people pray that, Lord, whatever it takes. Lord, I want my son to come back to you. Lord, whatever it takes. People ain't praying that no more, Clint. Because people ain't willing to, to take what it takes. Amen? So whatever it takes, it means you're going to have to get off of your do-nothing and do something for Jesus. Well, preacher, you don't understand. I'm so busy. I'm going to start praying that God makes you run busy. If that means take away your job, take away your job. See, we get to the point in our life where we are not adulterers, but idolaters. Where we put the idols of things in our life before God. And I'm not, I'm not fussing, don't get me wrong, but I, I remember growing up, and I keep, hate to keep going back there, but I don't know what's changed, but I remember growing up, if they said we're going to do something at the church, if there was a cleanup or there was something we're going to do, everybody came out. It was almost like having a church service. Now if you call a cleanup for a church, you got the faithful five that's coming. Preacher, I'd have come, but I had to do this and I had to do that. We had already made plans, preacher. Lord, as many times that we, we had plans to do something and they call for something for the church, your plans got to happen. It ain't happening because we got to go to church. I thought we were going fishing. We'll go fishing another day. We got to go to the church. Because there was something about growing up. It was a different in respect. It was a different in a, a reverence for God. And I don't know how we lost it. But church, I'm here to tell you today we lost it. All of us, we've lost it. We've lost putting God first. We've lost putting God first. First in our life. Well, preach, I put God first in my life. Coming to church ain't putting God first. Yes, it is. Everything that God has called you to do is putting God first. You can't put God first in one part of your life and not all the parts. It's like the fruits of the Spirit. It's one fruit. They're all together. It's different fruits, but it's one package. You can't get, you know, peace and not have love. You know, it, it goes together. And that's what God is calling us back. Even though we think everything is good, every, even though we think we're on the top of the mountain and everything is great, I'm at the top of my game. Lord, everything, we still need you. Just like the woman at the well, dry and thirsty, needed Jesus. We need Jesus. The 
rich young ruler needed Jesus. Are you going to accept him and do what he asks you to do? Or are you going to be like this young man and turn around and walk off sad because you have great things? Or you got this or you got that? I know some people say, well, I'm broke. It don't matter. I'll follow Jesus. It ain't just talking about your brokenness. It's talking about being broken and being willing to serve. Being willing to get a, a commode brush and clean the commode. Being willing to, to get your lawnmower and cut the grass. Being willing to pick up the, the trash in the yard. Being willing to, you know, grab a paintbrush and, and let's paint, you know. Being willing to do something for Jesus. Being willing to go out and invite people to church. That's what God called us to do, each and every one of us. He's given us the spirit of reconciliation. It's on us. We should be going out trying to win people. God help us. Stand with me if you will this morning. Betsy was playing another old song. It says, without him, I would be nothing. Amen. I don't know about you, but I know this morning without him, I am nothing. I am everything that I am because of Jesus. Everything that I'm ever going to be will be because of Jesus. It has nothing to do with my ability. It has to do with the ability that God gave me. And everything that I have inside of me, I want to use for Jesus. Everything. Bow your heads with me this morning. Today is one of those days that I feel like, I don't know who it is, but I feel like God is speaking to you and saying, are you going to follow me? Are you truly going to follow me? Are you going to quit with the excuses? Are you going to quit with all this other stuff that you say you can't do? And are you going to lay it down and follow me? Nobody looking around, nobody going on, but if, if you are that person, because I know there's somebody in this church, I feel it in my heart right now. If you're that person, but nobody looking, if you just lift your hand, I want to pray with you. I'm not going to call you up here, not going to do all this other stuff. Thank you for the hand going up. I know there's more. That's between you and God, and you, you need to pray. Because I don't want you to walk out of this church today sad because you refuse to take up his cross and follow him. But preacher, you don't understand what I've been through. Let me tell you something. We've all been through stuff. We're going through say it all the time, you're either going through a storm, coming out of a storm, or fixing, or, or in the middle of one. We've always got something going on. But Jesus is our Savior. And there's nothing you've ever done that God will not forgive you for. There's only one unpardonable sin, and that's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I don't believe nobody in this church has done that. But guess what? He loves you. He loves you just like you are. But he wants to make you like he wants you to, you to be. He wants you. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you will touch hearts and lives today, God. Lord, that more people will step up and say, God, I am willing to deny my flesh, to deny myself, to deny anything that's in my life, God, and take up my cross and follow you. God, I'm willing to set everything aside and say, God, I want you. I want you more than anything. As the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and these things will be added unto you. God, I know if I seek you, you will bless me. God, I pray as this church seeks you, you will bless us as your people. Father, I ask you, Lord, right now for me, I can't pray this prayer for anybody else, but for me. Lord, forgive me. Help me to be like you. Help me to follow you, Lord. Help me, God, to have a good heart and renew a right spirit within me. That I'll follow you, God, with everything that I have. That I won't let the enemy come against my mind, come against my body, come against my heart, come against my family, come against this church in the name of Jesus. We rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you.
you dispatch angels around this church, around these people, around these homes, around these lives. Keep us safe. Keep us, God, connected to you. Father, I pray you bless us. You move in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for coming today. Don't forget Wednesday night, 6 o'clock. Taco! And this ain't Taco Bell, y'all. This is going to be La Quero Taco Bell. This is going to be La Quero Serencada. So we're, we're excited. Uh, come out and be a part of that with us. We love you. We appreciate you. Uh, I just want to make this little public address announcement real quick, okay? If you got stimulated <laughs> by the stimulus, I'm being real now. You need to tithe. Because that's an income. So don't let, the, don't let the devil steal from you. Tithe on everything you get, and God will bless you. Amen. That's my perfect public address announcement for today. PSA, pay your tithe. We love you.